Hi, and thanks for joining us on the Nomad Podcast. I'm Mitch, a.k.a. Viking, a.k.a. N-01, a.k.a. The Show Stopping, Panty Dropping, Beer Chugging, Dinky Tugging, Mouth from the South, Barack, and Caleb. <laughs> Hi. So, this is our first attempt at a uh, Nomad podcast uh caleb what are your what are your thoughts my thoughts it's gonna be interesting uh normally we've done little videos here and there on the facebook page i mean with the fun edits and everything like that you can't really overlap that with a podcast so it should be interesting well let's start a tradition of uh cracking a oh, few yeah. brews and boom no shotgun, just pure sipping. It's just sipping. It's Tuesday cheers after all. To new, ma- <laughs> yeah. Oh, to uh, to new adventures in the uh, promotional world. Yes. Um, the main main thing reason we're kind of starting a podcast would be it's a lot easier than making videos. At the end of the day, yeah, you're not doing ten takes of your tricks and whatnot with your pistol yeah that was one of the <laughs> one of the hardest things there when we were making our first videos especially you and i would get into the beers trying to crack a beer at the start of every take and then we fuck it up 19 times well it's not that we're trying to crack open a beer it's that we crack it open and then chug it back as quickly as we can because we're trying to make our videos not an hour long and then it's <laughs> like that was great and then a dog would run in or Trace would be laughing at us or something. And then it's like, well, we got to do that again because... Have we calmed down in our old age? I think we've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> we are now doing a smooth jazz podcast. Welcome to NPR Radio. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're kind of going into this a little bit blind. I don't know if we really know. I don't, do you have any this podcast a... experience at all? No, but I was told I should get into voice acting. Nice. Yeah. Some little lady was like walking by. I was like, hello, ma'am. And she almost fell to the floor because she's like, are you in radio? And I'm like, no. She's like, you should be. I'm like, oh, sweet. Thanks. All right. So here we are trying it out. A pilot episode, if you will. A pilot episode. Nomad, the pilot. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I guess... I don't have any experience on this either, but it, I think it goes well with us when we're shooting the videos. Um, so I think both of us are kind of the kind of person that wants to be in front of a camera or in front of a microphone, but we should be kind of getting used to kind of just talking to each other. I guess we're talking. Natu- to, naturally talking because there's a microphone. Just kind of naturally talking. <laughs> we're just going to have all of our conversations in front of a microphone now. Um so first off, let's start with uh, one of the main suggestions was starting with what do we look for when we go to purchase a airsoft gun? I mean, that's a good question. Honestly, it's been a while since I've purchased one, but I think I I have uh, I have the problem where I want something new just about every day. <laughs> it's new and shiny. You just want it. Maybe, Sorry, maybe that's the thing. I don't know if the if the microphone was picking up properly there. This is our first attempt, after all. The pilot. <laughs> the pilot. Um, well, for me, as uh, as you know, I just bought the um, VFC Stinger. Oh yeah, uh, the Stinger. Really, one I was as I was going to play the medic for this year. Within a month of buying the Stinger, I wanted it a small, easily carry around gun uh easy to kind of strap down if i was running into medic people and then within a month of having it i extended the rail and i'm not the medic (laughs) yeah (laughs) hpa (laughs) you extended the barrel you added a grenade launcher yeah and now you're not a medic (laughs) that's complete opposite yeah um i think but you've you've had the same primary for years now no i have had the same one since I'm going to say at least two, if not three solid years, I've had the same rifle. I've had multiples over that time. I think I've had, had up to 10 at one point. But then 
at a certain point, I got really sick and tired of having like three SG whatever mags and then four SR25 mags, but then like 20 different types of M4 mags <laughs> because it went well with other guns and whatnot. So I just sold like everything except for my current gun and I went from scratch. Yeah, that's something like I'm, uh, you've got a few years on me in airsoft of, uh, like experience and like out in the field and stuff like that. But I know for me, when I first started, I didn't, it's a a rush. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't exactly (laughs) like, I I knew what I liked in video games and stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. but then you, you kind of realize quick once you actually get out there in the field, it's, (laughs) it's not exactly the same. Like, uh, when I first started, I was quite the pudgy kid and I wanted a running gun and I realized that wasn't my thing right off the start. My first gun was, uh, uh, I had two first guns. I had one... Oh, 36 something? Yeah, I had a G36, That's a Umarex G36 as my first gun. It was bought used. Before oh, I even got a chance to use it, it was <clears> broke. <throat> but it sat... It probably sat in my closet for like six months before I even actually came out to uh, try it. I've never actually seen you with that before. I could... I don't even... I think I sold it. Um, but it was when... Uh, uh, Legion was mm-hmm. running the school games in Welland there. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't uh, get went a out to go to that. Um, jo- uh, one of our friends, Josh, was running a game. Still <laughs> one of the best games I've been to in the area. Ustein. Yeah, how do you pronounce your name, Wist- buddy? Ustein. Wist- Wist- uh, Josh Ustein. We'll say that. <laughs> um, so I was supposed to start the next day was the game. And then I went in because it wasn't firing right. And... I said, screw it, and because it wouldn't work and the tech wouldn't be able to fix it in time, I ended up buying an ICS M4 uh, per MK3. Is that the thing in my house? Yeah, it's been sitting at your house for like a year now. Yeah, I still gotta do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> never had a problem with it, though. I've had that thing for probably about four years, and I gamed it for a long time, but I had the... It's just a wire that has to get soldered back on. That's all it's... That's yeah, sure and I never took it apart, nothing, and uh, but I said I started liking that, and then I wanted to get into the LMG, so I got an LMG, and then I found <clears> as <throat> the years went on, I started playing more. I was more of an upfront mm-hmm. player, not a stay back player, so I ended up with like like three M4s, two LMGs. I tried sniping there for like a day. I can't see you sitting still no. for more than two seconds. No, no. <laughs> And then I... Uh, Not even as LMG, just like, ah, this is too long. And then for a while there, I just started borrowing uh, Colin and Aaron Brinks guns for, for about a solid year. Um, yeah. To uh, two members on our team, they have uh, probably like 9 million different airsoft guns, so... But what, uh, what was your first gun? My first gun was an Ares Amoeba. It's M4 style. And I think I bought it for around 400 bucks or something like that as a, as a starter gun. That's a pretty good price, I thought. And I never once had an issue with it. It shot good, played good, never never broke on me. Uh, I think I sold it because I wanted money for another gun or something like that, as it always goes. Um, let's see, I went from, from that, I bought my buddy's... Aries Honey Badger. Cool. That thing was sick. We so, both still have our Honey Badgers. I love the Honey Badger. Honey Badgers are a great gun. I see them at Milsom's all the time. They're like old, older Aries guns, mm-hmm. like probably three, four years ago. I have not heard a single bad thing about that generation of Honey Badger. You yeah. still have yours. I have the shorter rail system one. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, you have the CQB. I have the AR version, but the CQB <laughs> is an inch longer. Yeah, the CQB version <laughs> is longer. If, if the Honey Badger could be updated to the CQB being the shorter rifle, I think that would be pretty cool. I'd like to see that update. Yeah, I, um, uh, I haven't seen or heard anything about like newer generation 7, but you don't, anybody that owns one, they own them from like years ago. Yeah, uh, I've seen a few of them HP8 at, uh, I think it was Nightfall last year I saw that. Awesome game. Um, 
I owned a Sig 553. I can't remember the maker model of it. I got that off of a trade. And I traded that for a Master Sniper Rifle. Rocked a bolt action for a long time. Ares SR25. Rocked that for a very long time. And uh, yeah, I guess like Sniper DMR was kind of my thing for for a while. Always rocking an AR for the team base. For Milsims and stuff. Because not everyone can rock bolt action during those games. Um, but I think where I end up now is actually I'm really happy with it. Got my M4 base. Yeah, you're kind of that mid between. Like it's an M4, but it, it you got the solid stock. Solid and stock, the A1 frame or whatever it's called. Yeah, it definitely it looks like it's more of that uh, kind of marksman style rifle, with still staying within the limits of being a reasonable size for an M4. So you kind of get yeah. the best of both worlds. It's I absolutely love it, and the best part is when people go, "Hey, can I can I check out your gun?" And you're like, "Cool, man, have at her." They can't change the stock size on you. <laughs> that's that's always been my number one peeve. Hand it over to someone and they'll jam it sh- short where you're, it's crushing your battery or whatever. It's um, it's always good. Yeah, like my personal opinion on it is when it comes to especially looking into like your first gun or even buying guns in general. It it's. Mm. I think it's all aesthetics for me. Like, if you like the look of something, you like the feel of something, yeah. it doesn't really matter what's on the inside unless... Like, if you're going for an off-the-shelf mm. VFC nowadays, that's VFC that's is, by far the best deal you're going to get, in my for, opinion. For roughly $500 yeah, range, or, or, you're, you're spending very little money for the, for the quality yeah, the, qual- the awesome. quality of those. Plus, like, the the look, the feel of all the VFCs. Mm-hmm. Except for those stupid ones with the panther heads on them. I don't know. I forget. Uh, the Avalon something or other. If I, I just think that's flashy. stupid. It's flashy. And some people just like flashy. Very speed. So I think it would look okay if you put, like, a suppressor inside that. Kind of like the Honey Badger, Honey Badger style. style. Yeah, yeah. That'd be kind of cool. But, yeah, it's definitely a speed softer style. Especially when you get, like, the red ones or whatever. Like, bright yeah. colors. But same um, same kind of thing though. Like if you yeah. if you like the look of it, in even if it's a VFC or if you're looking for something cheaper, um, like a lot of classic army guns, things like that. That at least if they have a good body that you like and are comfortable with, yeah, you can upgrade it. Like if you're getting into airsoft, hopefully you're going to be playing for years to come. So it gives you that room that at least it's something you like and you can mm-hmm. upgrade the internals to whatever you want. Well, my my gun is a classic army, but nothing of it is classic army except for the frame of it. And the frame is like, held up. Like the, the very stock well. is changed out, the grip's changed out. Uh, yeah, just like the main body body of it and the uh, the rail is is original classic army to it yeah it's been holding up great i mean it was a blowback aeg now it's a, a super, it had the super, blowback on it? it had a blowback aeg and the thing was my brother that was actually my brother's first gun and after a while of him playing with it it kept jamming on him couldn't figure out why so then he bought himself a scar l or something like that and then that thing just collected dust i i was a fool in wanting to try to be a gun tech and whatnot props to Colin because he's amazing at it but then I tried working on it and my brother's <laughs> like yeah get it working have it have it I don't care type thing it's a project gun I'm like sick figures out it was a BB that was stuck in the blowback system oh. <laughs> so I popped it out I was like sweet I go to the field I brought that with my honey badger the gun jammed instantly again <laughs> So then I just rocked the honey badger. When I got home, I literally just ripped the thing out. So then it was just an AEG for a long time. <laughs> and then that's how it starts to look like the way it does. Just a little Frankenstein a little here, gun. A little there. Well, that's, we're, we're both pretty lucky for, well, for a long time, knowing uh, Colin. Um, Colin Brink and his brother. Uh, Aaron. Aaron Krampus, as a lot of you might know him. Um on our team, if, if shit breaks, we kind of just make a puppy dog face and <laughs> hand it to him. Whereas a lot, especially new players, aren't as lucky um, mm-hmm. and kind of 
the w- one thing I would recommend is if you think you're going to be working on your own gun, buy a cheap gun off the start. Learn, get stuff to learn on because the last thing you want to do is buy a $500 gun, something that could be minor goes wrong. You take oh. it home, pull it apart, lose a spring or a, something like that. Now it's completely fucked and you got to take it in to a store and have oh. it more work than it could have been in the first place. Like we were lucky knowing guys to help us out, but yeah. a lot of new players, they do more damage than they could. Well, before they showed up, uh, I mean, I don't want to bash or anything, but like our our sponsor, their gun tech servicing was was a little suboptimal. Uh, yeah, it was a little on the rough side. I mean, they had some people. It was, that knew yeah, it was this, some guys some coming in that contract work, if you will. Yeah, but it was kind of hit and miss depending on who was in. Once, but once they showed up, it was like the the heavens opened, and you could hear the angels singing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. Calling an air and standing there like, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. And it's just like, ever, ever since then, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Um, tech Head is what I uh, believe. I don't know if it's his. Tech- in, is it in, does he have an Instagram or is it uh, just a YouTube? Let me check that. I'll check that real quick. We're not privy to that information. Uh, he doesn't allow us access to his social media stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, so when it comes to like looking into your first guns and what draws, just call him Brink. Just call him Brink. It's just call him Brink. Call him Brink. That's that's his. Instagram. And he has four posts. Don't look him up on Instagram. There's next to zero point. <laughs> I mean, if you look up Nomad Airsoft, then you're pretty yeah. much set there. Um, but anyways, like with the looking for your first gun, I'd have to go just with something that's comfortable and something you like the look of, and also please, for the love of God. <laughs> Do not buy a sniper off the start. Oh my god, don't ever. No. I mean, well, unless the no. the new Ari, the Aries no. uh striker no, 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 Come no. on. As it is It's like a it's like 200 new, bucks. The new Aries striker, yes. Awesome gun. That would be the, the only one I would recommend off the start. Don't get a bolt action as your first gun. That's my rule. Like, like if you just played I Call- I did that and it was awful. I was all like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, the there's uh, no American. One... What was the American Legend movie? American Sniper. What? American Sniper. Yeah, that movie had just come out, and well, I'm all like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm like, Chris Kyle, frick yeah, this is amazing. Bolt action, headshots only. <laughs> no, you get no headshots. You you're lucky if you get near them half the time. Like well, sniping they're... in airsoft." Is very like you have to get an M4 first or something AR based, and then work your way to getting a really good sniper. Anybody that grew up and played Modern Warfare when it first came out <laughs> with the fight, what was the mission name? Which I really should know. The main sniper mission from. Oh, I don't know why I can't think of the name. We're gonna get shit on for this. Um, invasion or something? No, like, I, I. Were you like crawling around like yeah. a gilly and stuff? Yeah. It's, oh man. And it's uh, it's like in Chernobyl or whatever it is. Yeah. I, I can't forget the only Call of Duty mission that really. Eights. The only Call of Duty mission that really stands out to me is like Modern, War- Modern Warfare Two. No Russian. You just yeah. walk through the airport. <laughs> oh my god, where you're where you're suggested to shoot yeah. everyone, but you don't actually have but, to. So most of like. For a lot of people that are getting into airsoft, a lot of stuff before is like movies, video games, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so if you are really into snipers and stuff like that, and then you get into airsoft, you find it's not like games aren't only 15 minutes long and there's people all over the place for you to shoot. It's, you know, like some people do. Yeah, they get the sniper and they love it right off the start. And that's mm-hmm. what they want to do. I still I still have my bold action and I still mm-hmm. take it out once in like, I'm going to say... A good five times a year, I'll play my bolt action during like a walk on. Mm-hmm. I don't take it to big games. Not allowed. Well, not allowed. <laughs> Nor do I ever play <laughs> that the sniper squad like certain yeah. milsims allow, like two, like one or two. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Like teams the uh, for two hundred bucks, the new Ares uh, striker sniper is just a 
great choice because even even I want one. Just, I'm not a sniper at all, but especially like the short barrel one, kind of looks very like Mad Max ish. Mad Max ish. Well, um, Jr. has one. He used it last was, Sunday. Yeah, I was gonna say we have a uh, we have a guy on our team, um, Jr. AKA Knight, uh, and he he's a big fucking dude, and he rocks big that boy. thing, and it looks it looks comfortable. Like it's not like it's. I want to know how he hides so well. He does. He's, much bigger than me like he's much taller too and he he just hides so incredibly well yeah once he gets into position it's hard to get him out of it i can't find him half the time um he's on my team and i can't find him <laughs> i can't find colin half the time <laughs> oh no uh this past weekend i friendly fired one of our players uh that the colin. tech we had, were talking about he had moved up to a very advantageous location, but hadn't informed anyone on the team that he was moving up that far. So when I saw a gun in the woods, I just started shooting at it and was very successful. And it wasn't until he walked out of the woods that I realized I had just killed our own team. <laughs> it was amazingly bad, though. Um, but yeah, so like that, snipers, LMGs, it... it I think your best bet when looking into a first gun is just go with a basic M4, depending on the community and what you like. AK is AK is acceptable. AKs are cool. If I got an AK, it's got to be like gas powered blowback. Like it's yeah, got to like be heavy and mean if it's an AK. But yeah. I would definitely go with something M4 based. Just that a way. Colt style M4. Yeah, that way, you know, you can change this if you want easily. You can change that if you want easily. It's easier to find parts for M4. M4 is just, like, the main... Mags, for the most part, are incredibly cheap. Yeah, don't get something that's preparatory for magazines. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a cool gun that's all brand new and fancy. And then, like, half a year later, you have to get ma those magazines. But they don't sell them anymore because no one bought it. Mm hmm like, I rock Aries magazines. Yeah, they it's work kinda, beautifully. Kind of sounds like we're sucking Aries dick on this one, but the Aries mags, I use, I use the cheapest Aries mags just because I know how bad I am for just throwing a mag on the ground. Yeah. Oh, you're so bad for that. Although, the one time, because you get the, like the $8 cheap ones, mm -hmm. you can get the $15 decent ones, and yeah. then the There's like $25 the 20 ones, yeah. which I run. I love them, but the first time I bought my last batch of them, I dropped it on the cement floor and it broke right in half. <laughs> so yeah, I did like with just because with you spend eight bucks a mag, on. like I still mark them and everything like that. But if someone comes up and says, "Hey, I need a mag or something like that mid game," and you give them to them, and you don't end up getting it back. Yeah. It's it's not a massive hit to the wall, and it's like, oh well, that's why I use cheap mags. So yeah, well, I, don't know, I find. Cheaper mags don't last as long and stuff like that. With the expensive ones, you, like the Aries ones, you can take them apart. You can uh, do maintenance on the springs. You can retention them and stuff like that. I do absolutely zero maintenance on anything. Mm -hmm. I just use it till it breaks. And then you go, call in. Yeah. Help. And then if he can't fix it, uh, it, I'm, yeah, NQ gets a lot of sales for me. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Jeez. But um, I am trying to find that mission well the pit's the first one where you go through and do like the, yeah uh, where are you keep going keep going some sniper fi is that the one yeah isn't it i don't know i'm gonna click on it see what happens that's like one of the first mm. one but that's not the one i'm talking about it's uh is it in the bravo section do you think? i have no idea whatever we're gonna look it up for we're gonna have to play play through it um oh, but anyway geez. so in in wrapping i think Wrap it up. I think 25 minutes is good for our first... For the pilot. For the pilot. Yeah, that's the title of it. For the pilot. Cheers to the pilot. Cheers. Clink. Um, so, final thoughts. Personally, if you're going out looking for your first rifle, or uh, a lot of you people that have been in the sport for years now that haven't really settled down with anything... Find something comfy that you like, that you like the look of, and... Good weight to it. Good weight. Something that's comfy. It doesn't have to be incredibly light, but, like, my body... Yeah, you want to feel metal. to it. You don't want to, like, 
depending on what you play airsoft for, if you're going for that semi mil sim feel, you don't want a plastic gun. You want something that feels good, feels real, really gives you that that mental stimulation of the yeah. Once you put your helmet fire on fight and stuff, and, you're like, I'm in it. Yeah. yeah Basically, military larping. It is LARP. But uh, what are your what are your final opinions? Final opinions. Uh, if you run an EG, get one more battery than you think you're gonna need. God knows I've used about twenty in one game. Myself. Yeah, you have bad luck with batteries. Bad luck. That's why you went HPA, man. I HPA mean, master race. That's the thing. When you yeah, so like, if you're going for if you're gonna go HPA, go for the gun that looks cool because that's yeah. all that's gonna matter after that. Yeah, that's what I meant by you can upgrade. And then anything. if you're gonna go for something kind of. Cheap, uh, cheaper price but good quality you know 450 500 bucks somewhere in there is probably going to be your best bet uh, VFC definitely on on that list uh, if you're not sure buy a used gun ask how long they've used it and yeah. if it's been it's within pretty, a it's pretty years. hard nowadays to buy used guns that's the only thing it is and if you want to be the gucciest boy on the block buy a gas gun oh yeah all those guys they're so cool they're so such cool guys. Uh, Chomps had it for they, Icebreaker. It was the coolest thing ever. All the gas gun guys are so fucking cool. They make flipping cool. They're so flipping cool. Unless, this, you're, unless you're gonna bleep it, I don't know. I don't know. I had no plan. What are we doing this for a child audience? Yeah, I don't know. You never know. Depends who shares it. True. Um, gas guns are cool. You're gonna spend a lot of money, and you can only use it half the year here in Canada. But if you play indoor or anything like that, that's they're so cool. Mm-hmm. I just realized you weren't you were trying not to swear earlier. You wish you would have told me. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I figured you. Uh, I just assumed. Well, you shouldn't. Well, fuck it. All right. Fuck it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This has been your first pilot nomad uh, podcast. I'm Viking. I'm Can Do. Have Cheers. a have a great fucking day. <laughs> <laughs>